Hey, welcome back, Star Wars fans, to the Star Wars Build the Millennium Falcon Model Kit session starring me, your host, Dominic Tringali. Guys, it's been a long time since I made one of these videos. It's because I had a really hard time getting a replacement set of pieces. The original issue 38 that you see in front of me uh, that they sent me was completely busted and I complained and they eventually sent me a replacement set. It took a good lengthy while so it kind of held up the works for a while. Okay, like I said this is issue 38 so that brings the grand total to 399 euro and 14 cents because each issue after the first is 10 euro and 99 cents the first issue coming in at an introductory price of 3 euro 50 cents and a deal I made through my news agent allows me to get every 25th issue free so anyway let's jump right into this issue and then we can talk about what's actually inside of it so you have this interesting article where it talks about the sentinel class landing craft which is a variant of the Lambda class. Um, the Lambda class, which you saw uh, originally in the third installment of Star Wars, um, Retur uh, Return of the Jedi, or, yeah, it was Return of the Jedi, I believe. Um, this is a, this is a uh, variant class um, that is more for troop transport and cargo uh, transport between the various Death Stars and uh, it has like a crew requirement of like one pilot, one co-pilot, three gunners and can have up to 75 troops and up to 180 tons of material has your standard one uh, 1.0 hyperdrive um, has a planetary atmosphere speed of 1000 kilometers an hour yeah so not a lot of stuff going on here of course you saw it in the special edition of uh, Star Wars A New Hope you saw the Lambda class um, in the background of the scene with the uh, sand troopers I mean they're stormtroopers but they're desert trains but you know like these dewbacks these lizard like mounts that they have these are actually like theirs this is like their special equipment that they actually have like so I mean, these guys actually travel through the galaxy with dewbacks. So, I mean, like, on board a Death Star, or, uh, sorry, not a Death Star, but a, a Star Destroyer, is, like, a squad of these guys with their dewbacks? I mean, that's kind of weird, right? I thought so. So, anyway, here's some concept art of the original um, Lambda class um, vessel. Actually, this isn't the, this is, well, yeah, this is the Lambda, this is the Sentinel class um, no, this is the, this is the Lambda class, um, original concept art that it was later based on, um, no, this was the Sentinel class, I just read it, uh, this is, this was some early concept art by, uh, Ralph McQuarrie, um, yeah, so you see a lot more in Star, uh, Star Wars Rebels, so there's that. And then we have this article on the sentient species of Endor. Now, uh, we all know about the Ewoks. Uh, you've probably, I mean, you, if you're a Star Wars fan, you've definitely seen um, The Return of the Jedi. And uh, if you're a true Star Wars fan, you've probably even seen um, The Carnival of Courage and The Battle of Endor um, spin-off movies. You might have even seen the Ewoks animated series. Um, so, so you might, you're probably pretty uh, familiar with the forest moon of Endor, which, I mean, it's also, it's important to note that the forest moon is not actually all forest. There, are, there is actually a sea on it, um, some deserts, mountains, whatnot. It's just the forest just happens to make up a large uh, amount of the actual surface. Um, one thing I found interesting about this article is talking about the, y the yuzums. The Yuzums, which you probably might recognize from the special edition of the Return of the Jedi, we had this character by the name of uh, Joe uh, Yazwa or Yoz Yauza, Joe Yauza, um, who was uh, the lead singer in um, 
Max Rebu's band. Um, I, I always, I thought, you know, it really kind of cheesed up things. It didn't really necessarily improve the special edition, didn't really improve things with that music number that they added, but I, I digress. Um, so Endor, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, over the years been the site of numerous crashes and uh, a number of species have kind of taken home on Endor or the forest moon of Endor that aren't native, um, but uh, apparently there are three native species, the Ewoks, um, their cousins, the uh, Dulocs, and of course the Yuzums. And uh, there's this f um, foreign species, the Gorax, who was the uh, antagonist of the film um, Caravan of Courage, the Ewok adventure, um, which you see here a clip from. Um, there was, yeah, there's... It was, apparently, uh, George Lucas was talking about doing uh, more of these these uh, Ewok movies, but they just never ended up working working out. I imagine Disney will probably, at some point, pump out a couple kids' movies with Ewoks. We'll find out in the future. Um, but the Gorax apparently can grow uh, on their home planet. They grow to be six meters in height, but um, on Endor, the fourth moon of Endor, the, gra the low gravity and high oxygen content allows them to grow up to be 30 meters tall. And I mean, like, 30 meters? That's... That's huge, dude. That's like that's like a hundred feet tall. Um. Yeah, like that's. They could probably kick the shit out of a rancor. Um. I mean, a hundred feet tall. Whole. I I I. I mean, I'm just going off what the article says here, but like that. I someone should fact check that. I mean, as much as you can fact check an article that's uh, from a fictitious bullshit universe. And then you have the Secrets of Space Flight article talking about repulsor lifts now, which of course, uh, you know, the, the, the Star Wars universe has kind of talked about repulsor lift technology for years. You have uh, skiffs, you have pod racers, land speeders, speeder bike swoops, sail barges, skiffs, um, even, air, uh, even air speeders, which uh, they had that lovely... Uh, chase scene in um, the uh, prequel movie, the second prequel movie, um, <laughs> uh, Attack of the Clones. I always laugh when I say Attack of the Clones. I just thought it was such a terrible title for a film. And uh, you can see here there are eight um, repulsor lifts in the uh, dorsal side of uh, the Millennium Falcon to allow it to slowly descent um, towards any sort of planet, utilizes this gravity well technology using the planet's natural gravity, and uh, of course, being modified, you know, the, the Falcon being heavily modified actually has these like kind of like retro jets that um, fire in different directions and, and maneuver a bit to allow for um, the ship to kind of control its, its uh, you know, effects its descent and its uh, ability to get off planet quickly because um, apparently using uh, sublight engines planet side releases a bunch of like dangerous radiation and you could actually kill people but like of course Han Solo sometimes doesn't really give an F so he just does it anyway um, this this interesting article right here talking about the uh, first repulsor lift that we see of course being Luke's um, land speeder uh, and how it was actually built from a three-wheeled Bond bug. Um, thought that was kind of interesting. I always thought it was just kind of put on a um, put on like a like a cart or something. And but apparently they they hid the wheels with like these mirrored skirts. Very interesting stuff. Oh, and then of course uh, Solo and Chewbacca modified these repulsor lifts on the Falcon so that they can actually use the exhaust as a weapon if need be. thought that was kind of funny. So today um, we're going to continue working, uh, well actually not continue, but we're going to start officially working on this area right here which is the uh, retractable lift area. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my parts bag and show you what's inside. So here is parts bag number 38. Uh, it looks 
from a visual standpoint, I take a look at everything inside. It doesn't look like anything's broken. But um, let's go ahead and tear it open and see what we find inside. So we might find some surprises nonetheless. So we found a number of various pieces. This piece right here, which will be um, obviously some exterior plating. Um, and then the actual components that we'll be using to assemble all the uh, lift parts. So this looks like a rather technical issue, so this might take a little while. So we'll go step by step and I'll try to give, show you as many um, hints, tips, and step by step processes that I go through. Um, one note is we will need that piece, uh, the LED light strip from um, issue number 37. So I'm going to go to my desk and I'm going to grab that and pull it out so we can start with that with step one. Great. So the first thing I did before anything actually working wise is I took the nine screws out of uh, here, 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 and here uh, to actually remove this last piece of framing that I put together. Um, apparently it says that you, this should be not be uh, attached yet to the main frame. Um, we're going to be moving it around a lot so I'm going to go with what the instructions say and go ahead and uh, take it out and then put it back when I'm all finished. Um, again, uh, I did uh, remind you guys um, I was kind of shortchanged one of these two pin connector pieces so I ended up using a four piece, a four hole connector piece here. Um, hopefully in the future they're going to give me another two pin connector piece. I have no idea. I'm hoping uh, or else I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and take out this piece right here, this LED light strip, and try to attach it in step one. For the, so the first step was I fed the uh, light strip through this hole right here, this small square hole right here. And if I turn it over, you'll see... Um, I'm not supposed to unfold the wire yet, so I haven't done that. I followed the instructions in that regard. Uh, I'm supposed to um, lay the piece out like so, and I'm supposed to take the adhesive you see on the back off and then adhere it uh, right beneath these second holes right here. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you what it looks like when I'm all finished um, with those first five steps, because that actually makes up steps one through five. So let's get that done and see what it looks like when I'm all finished. When you have successfully put the uh, adhesive together it will look like so and uh, it will stick there. Getting your finger between the adhesive and the, and the LED lighting strip um, can be a bit of a hassle but I, uh, I did get it finished. So let's go ahead and like take a look at what step six is and see how difficult that's going to be for us. So the next step is taking this piece, uh, part four um, and part five, and I'm going to uh, let me try to pull in the focus on that one. I'm going to actually put this piece here uh, and then glue this piece right here into place, trapping uh, the door to the hinge that uh, you can might, if I pull in really tight, you may be able to see, uh, no, yep, there you go. You can see like a little bit of a dot, that's the hinge um, extension, extension for the hinge. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and see what we got when we're all finished. Great. So that completes the first three and four steps of uh, the ramp assembly. So I've glued these three parts I showed you into place and it's able to fold completely. Now the next step is completely optional but because it's such a simple step that will add um, some nice touches to the product overall I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I'm going to have, it's going to ask me to paint this entire section uh, gray I'm not 100% sure how that's going, what that's going to do for me, but it's optional. I'll do it. It's not a big deal. Um, and uh, we'll see what that looks like when I'm all finished with steps um, five and six and moving on to step seven where I'll be gluing on some pieces to this part right here. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. 
So I added a little Citadel, uh, Citadel foundation paint. Uh, I used Adeptus Battle Gray um, to start painting the uh, middle part here, a nice gray. Um, it's a little lighter than the color they used in that, but I would call that color more silver anyway. Um, it's, it's a darker gray, but I like that. It'll hide imperfections better. Um, I need to still paint the other side of this flap, but I'll let this dry for a bit. And in the meantime, I'll go ahead and just do steps seven and eight, which is to test fit these pieces right here. Um, this, uh, the ramp seals, um, test fit those, and then put some a dab, a dab of glue uh, right into each of those spots. And then I'll be all done with the finish. I'll be all done with step 38, um, well, stage 38 assembly for the ramp. So let me go ahead and glue those, test fit and glue those into place and show you what it looks like right before I get ready to finish painting. Great. So that's what it looks like when those have been uh, glued into place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just flip this over and quickly add some paint onto the other side to the flap and let that dry um, and then move on to the last part which is the assembling of the hinge which looks like a far more technical step. So let's go ahead and try that out and see what it looks like. So for the assembling of the hinge itself we only need these four parts that came in issue 38 and six of those screws. Luckily I took nine out just a few minutes ago so I'll just go ahead and recycle and use those ones. Uh, the black screws that we use in the framing. Um, over here I have the uh, hinge, the the, uh, the ramp door drying. Um, the paint is still a little tacky, let that dry. It dries pretty quick, but uh, in the meantime I can go ahead and do this step, which the first step is to actually um, assemble all of these together and then step two is to actually start um, screwing these uh, J looking brackets, we'll call them J brackets, um, onto this little piece right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, steps two and three are identical, so I'll go ahead and do that and um, show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. So after steps one through three, this is what I have built. Um, and next step four is to put it on here. They recommend you use some thread lock or some Loctite or whatever you have in your country. Um, just some sort of like silicone um, screw formula because you ha you can't tighten the screws all the way but they might over time loosen. Um, I don't have any so I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave put that on my shopping list and just assemble it as is and see how it works out. And uh, then after that we'll be done with assembling the hinge and then we'll move to, to actually hinging the ramp. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I have completed the actual hinge. So that's my hinge. I'm hoping that I assembled it correctly. Um, it should, they say it should move pretty easily and it does. So um, it locks into place as well. So I don't know if it's supposed to lock. It doesn't say anything about that. It says it should move freely. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that it moves freely enough for them uh, for this whole thing to work. So the next step is actually hinging the ramp. So I'm going to pull out that piece of hole that I got um, in issue 37 and I'll be using that to tie all these pieces together from today. Great, so let's go ahead and do that and see how it all looks. So the assembly of the ramp has us with this uh, the actual ramp piece, um, the outer hole piece from issue 37 and this hinge piece. Uh, the first step is just to take this piece which I've painted as you can see uh, both sides painted. I'm going to put that together like so, forming a nice tight grip together. And then step two is just going to have me fitting these lugs in. And step uh, four is, well, the third, the, the third actual step because I don't really consider test fitting ever a step. Step four in the, in the assembly guide, but I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, metal screws, the ones that have the um, un, the non-black ones essentially, the non-gold, non-black ones, just the other metal screws. I'm going to put eight of those into place and secure this all into to, uh, position and then we'll see what it looks like. But when it's all said and done, it should open and close like the picture. Great, let's see what happens. So that's what completes uh, stage 38 of the construction. Um, as you can see, it uh, 
hinges. It does what it's got to do. This piece right here, I actually just touched up some paint, so it's a, I don't want to touch it right the second. It's a little wet, um, but I'll put, I'll put this aside until I'm ready to start working on stage 39, which I'll be doing really soon, actually. So uh, with issue 39, we'll be getting a motor, um, ramp motor, and we'll be working with a lot more of the pieces we got in issue 37. Um, I have already have issue 39 in hand. I have a lot of actual backlog issues because I was waiting on this issue 38 so that I could um, start working on this again. So uh, stay tuned really soon for me to uh, go ahead and get that issue 39. It'll probably be later coming out later on um, this week, or at least a few days after I post this video. Um, yeah, so question of the day is, what do you guys think about the Ewoks? Uh, specifically, what do you think about, um, well, the race in general, but maybe some of the, uh, extra, uh, supplementary films, um, like, uh, uh, Caravan of Courage, or Battle of Endor, or even the Ewoks animated series. I'm really curious what you guys think about the Ewoks. I always personally love the Ewoks, but of course I was a little younger when Star Wars came out in the first place, so um, I imagine that if I was older I probably would have not liked the Ewoks as much. Um, anyway guys, uh, hit that like button as always. Feel free to answer the question down below as well as any other comments you have for the channel. Um, please show your love and support by hitting that subscribe button. And as always, guys, may the Force be with you.